This is Monique Genon, and you are listening to B-Movie Mania. Did I say that right? Hey everyone, how's it going? Paul Brooks here with a brand new B-Movie Mania interview for you. This one's a big deal for me because I have been a fan of this actor ever since I was a kid growing up in Illinois watching Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, and I'm sure I'm not alone there. Diane Franklin was nice enough to sit down with me and chat about her entire career and lots of stuff involving uh, the movie that the guys on the podcast just reviewed, Terror Vision. Diane is a ball of energy and unbelievably kind. She gave me some autographed pictures to hold on to, which I already have framed in my apartment. And she brought with her the actual coat that she wore back in 1985 in the classic comedy, Better Off Dead. I got to wear the coat and it was amazing. And I have a couple pictures that we'll post under the interview over on bmoviemania.com if you feel like checking those out, which you should. We also got links to all of Diane's social media information and ways you can connect with her, which you should also do. So without any further ado, here's my interview with the lovely and wonderful Diane Franklin. Hey Lloyd, what is this show called? It's B-Movie Mania. Mania. Diane, thank you so much for sitting down and chatting with me here on B-Movie Mania. Thank you. I am so happy to be here. And also, this is a totally excellent experience. To yes, be here. <laughs> I agree completely. Um, I wanted to start by asking you about Terror Vision, because the boys on the podcast just reviewed the movie. What are some, you know, some of your memories of shooting that film and working with the cast and crew and all that? Um, well, the first thing I wanted to say is it's unbelievable to me that Today, people still watch that film. Uh Um, Actually, when it came out, we really thought that it was going to be a hit because it was a parody of the 80s, made in the 80s. But that was the problem. (laughs) The problem was it wasn't a hit because people in the 80s didn't see it as funny. But we thought it was hilarious because it was like towards the end of the 80s well 86 and so we really thought that people would get sort of the inside joke but they didn't and so it bombed which was really sad because we I mean Mary Warnov and Garrett Graham and um the um all the other actors we we just enjoyed doing the film we had a blast so then now for it to be back again is a complete surprise. And I I even see Mary Warnov at uh, conventions and I've talked to her about it. And we both look at each other like, I have never, I cannot believe that there's this, these fans, these huge group of fans that love this film. And so I'm very grateful. Thank you if you love this film um, because we thought it was hysterical and because it is a parody. If you know, if you see the film, um, I play Susie Putterman and I'm a valley girl, but I'm also a punk rocker. And... um, I am also like a sort of a um, a wig. Actually, I have two or three wigs on. I forgot if it was two or three uh, that make me look sort of like Cindy Lauper. And uh, I was so 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 excited to get this role because I would not have normally been cast. If you look at me, you would never think that I could play a punk rocker and somebody who's edgy. Uh, and that is a, a personal dream of mine. I've always wanted to play somebody. Uh, I like playing edgy characters because it looks it's so different than my personality uh, as I come across to people, but um, it's just so fun. And it's also, uh, I have an edgy part of myself that, you know, I like to share and I think is is really cool. So It looked yeah. like you guys were having a lot of fun making that movie. Oh, we had a blast. Uh, first of all, the movie shot in Rome, which you would never know because it all takes place inside, basically. I think even the exterior, there's an exterior shot, is shot inside a, the studio, um, so it looks like it's, we have cars inside the studio, so it looks like it's outside, but I think it was shot inside. Uh, the great things about that film were we actually did work with a real monster, 
Um, it wasn't CGI. It was so I got to see the the people working on it from the, they were inside the monster um, with um, equipment, you know, pushing levers and having it move in in time with us dealing with the monster, talking with it on the film, and uh, we shot it in Italy, which was really interesting because what it did was it did something so funny, which is probably the reason why it'll never show on uh, regular television is that the visuals, the, the art department was from, um, it was Italian and the director, Technicoli, had said to the art department, hey, we, I want this to look like a pleasure palace. We just, you know, make it look, you know, really, you know, fun and, you know, sexy. And so what happened was all the Italian artists did these nude paintings of these, these sort of um, pop art nudity. And so they could never show it on regular TV because it was, you know, somewhat obscene, I guess, for the audience. <laughs> you can't show like a 13 year old these uh, things. So uh, uh, that's the only thing I think is a shame. I think the movie would have had a lot more. Um, visibility and would have been on, you know, all the B movie channels, you know, just to show like what a fun film it is if it was not for that. Uh, So that's kind of a shame. It's interesting how when you think about it, that filmmakers don't think ahead of time about that or or change it uh, or realize like who is going to watch a film. I mean, I think personally as an actress, I think about what audience is this for um, because that's really important. And um, I actually work with kids too. So I'm very much aware of over 18, under 18, over 21, right. under 21. So um, I think it's, you know, but it's such a great, fun, cool movie. And uh, the characters, I mean, Jonathan Grice, oh my yes. gosh, oh, as <laughs> OD. OD, like, oh my gosh, he was so funny, kiss the boot dude, you know, <laughs> and and I'm like, you know, I'm going to make you take your pills, you know, just such fun lines, and uh, the movie, I think, I don't know if you can tell me if it, if it still works today, if it's, sometimes I, when I originally saw it, I thought it moved a little slow, but on the other hand, Everything moves so quickly today that it's kind of fun to see a movie that you can just relax and watch. You can keep that movie on and you can have a party and it's still entertaining just visually. So yeah, I, I agree think, completely. You know, every movie has its purpose. And I um, I will say this, that a, lo- a long time ago, back when I was in my teens in the 80s, um, films were rated by you know, critics. And what they would do is they'd say, well, you know, you know, if you have your five dollars, where are you going to spend it? We're going to rate that film. And so if a film got a low rating, it disappeared. Um, But with the internet now, it's really a matter of taste. So, you know, there's days where you don't want to see, um, you know, a Sophie's Choice or or you don't want to, I don't know what's comparable today, but you, you want to see something that's fun that you don't have to maybe think a lot or you just can have fun with. Um, I know with Better Off Dead, that was um, really the case when that film went to the college circuit and people just wanted to have fun and they wanted to watch a film that they just could laugh. They, you know, they spent, college students spent all day working really hard. They do their classes and when they, at the end of the night, they're like, I just want to have fun and relax and be with my date or my friends and just watch a film that I could That's laugh at. That's definitely Terror Vision. Right, right. So Terror Vision, I think, is a great party movie. So if I was to give it a review, I'd say go, you know, invite a whole bunch of friends, get, you know, lots of like fast food or whatever food you like, like, you know, bowls of pretzels and Cheetos and whatever, and just, and drinks, and then just watch it and have it playing while you hang out with your friends and just, you're going to just love it. Um, Get all the stuff that they try to feed the monster in the movie, all the snacks that they get the monster. Yes, exactly. (laughs) Get those snacks and then just sit down and eat them and watch the film. Yes, Yes. exactly. Um, You mentioned your hair in the film. You had some pretty wild hair in this movie and wardrobe in Terror Vision. What was it like getting into your punk rock look every day on set? Okay, all right. So the great part of it was that it was multi-layered. Um, the girl uh, who was my the wardrobe woman, I forgot her name right now, but she was so much fun. And she kind of dressed that way herself. Like with mint, like her hair was different colors and she had like cool clothes. And uh, we had such a fun time putting it together. And it really was, a dis- the hair was a total discovery as we were doing it. Uh, Ted had nothing planned, but we just sort of put it together. We thought, oh, blonde, a couple of blonde wigs. Wait, let's try pigtails. Wait, let's color it. Ooh, let's put another one on top. And I was like, let's go. This is so much fun. It was really, really 
perfect. Um, I think a lot of what that film stands out in is the, the look and the color. And my character, oh my gosh, with the leather vest and then the tutu, what a great idea, you know? Uh, tough, but like also feminine. Um, just It's a very vibrant yeah. looking film yes. all around. And the makeup, the makeup that I had done was uh, very elaborate and super fun. And uh, the thing that attracts me about doing roles is... And in acting at all are the roles. And when I have a fun role, a good role, juicy role, I love it. So playing Susie Putterman, I mean, some people would be like, oh, my gosh, you played, you know, what's with this character? I'm like, no, you don't understand. This is I like playing a diverse group of roles. And certainly that's what is fun about acting. You know, I think that's what makes it interesting. You see me in real life and then you go, oh, but she played that. Like, that's the great discovery. People would go, wait a minute that person is the same person as that person in that right. film. Yeah. Um, but I, I loved Susie Putterman. I mean, what a fun, upbeat. And then, you know, I'm like an upbeat person. So that's like, oh, you know, so fun. And I got to shoot with a machine gun, machine yeah, gun, right? Yeah. I think it's the only film I've ever shot anything Shooting with. Shooting at the monster trying to save yeah. your brother. Exactly, exactly. That was just uh, so much fun. Oh, the thing that wasn't fun was that the air conditioner kept breaking down during the film. And so we'd be in this makeup and all this, uh, and, you know, in this in the layered clothes. And then it got really, really hot. So we would be shooting and sweating and the makeup person would be running over trying to pat us down. And the slime on the monster started, you know, kind of dripping. And so... Um, that was kind of a funny experience. Well, no movie is perfect. Yep, You're that's right. You're always going to have those situations happen. Exactly. And, and frankly, uh, you know, I think that's what makes the magic of a film happen. You know, um, I know like Ted Nikolai, who was the writer and director on it. You know, this is when you're a writer director, this is your baby. Right. And so you go in and you try to make your vision happen. But sometimes there are not so good surprises, but sometimes there are like magical surprises. And Ted was so proud of this film and we were super proud of it. We still are. Uh, so I'm really, really happy that he's getting the fan worship that he deserves. Yeah. Because it really came out of his imagination. And I think that's really the important thing is that if you're a filmmaker out there, you know, you the most important thing is you visualize it. Um, if you can direct your material, you're going to get one step closer to making that vision happen. And don't give up. I mean, who's to say, you know, whether you have to crowdfund or whether you have to, you know, get just do a little short to show people. I I just think today filmmakers are empowered to go and make their stuff. And the only thing that's standing in your way of making something is your lack of belief in your own self or your project. So don't let that be. Make it happen. Absolutely. 100 percent agree. Um, well, my fellow B-Movie Maniacs also had a few questions they wanted to ask you. Great. So, Hi, fellow B-Maniacs. Right? <laughs> yes, what's up, guys? Let's play one of those for you right now and see what they have to say. This first one is from Jay. Hi, Diane. Jason Hulls here. I gotta say, I loved Terror Vision. I thought it was crazy and funny, and I saw that you shot it in Italy, so I was just wondering, was that the first time you'd traveled out of the country? And did you get to do anything fun besides shooting while you were there? Thanks. Wow. All right. So let's see. Um, good question. Thank you for asking, Thank first you, of all. Uh, let's see. All right. So the first thing is I had been out of the country before. And I was really fortunate because I had sort of an exotic look, the dark eyebrows, dark hair, that I got uh, cast in a lot of uh, films that I traveled. And I thought every actress experienced this. But I, my friend Amanda Wiss, who is in Better Off Dead, she did most of her films in America, which I thought was really interesting. I mean, it never occurred to me. But if you have an exotic look, you're my, you know, or whatever, it's, you're sort of doing films maybe that are sometimes out of the country. Um, so I'm trying to think before I did that. Well, wow, I was in um, Rome for Bill and Ted's. Uh, which was, so that's interesting. And we shot uh, the English castle in Bill, uh, Bill and Ted's in Rome. But that would have been um, after Terror Vision. Terror Vision was after Bill and, the Bill and Ted's. Oh, wait, you're right. That happened in 89. Yeah. So, the, okay, that happened. So, no, okay, that didn't work. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, I was in Prague. Um, that was, but that was for, um, I did, uh, a, 
I was screen tested for Amadeus. <gasps> so look at the difference. Terrorvision Amadeus. Whoa, right? <laughs> That's like insane. But it's so much fun. Um, and I actually went to Prague. They flew me to Prague for the audition. It was between Elizabeth Berridge and I for the role. They took Elizabeth, which was beautiful and awesome. Um, but still, what an experience to travel for that film. Yeah. Um, and I started traveling actually pretty young because I started modeling when I was like 10. So... I got a little chance to go to get used to traveling by myself. I think that was the really interesting part. Um, Amityville, we shot in Mexico, so that was before, too. Um, okay, and the other question was, what else did I do? That's interesting. I actually stayed at a hotel right across the street from the Trevi Fountain when we when I did Terravision. Most people, they were at a, like sort of this other hotel that was kind of further away, but... I don't know, for some reason, I, I, we, we didn't, the hotel wasn't working. I remember that the hotel had metal shades, the one, the first hotel we were put at. Like, so when you're in your hotel room, imagine metal shades coming down. Like, it, it felt like a prison. So I think when we got there, we were like, no, I don't think we're going to Italy and staying here in a place with metal. <laughs> no, it's not going to work out. So, um, so then they put us at this hotel, um, across from the Trevi Fountain, which was amazing because it was sort of like the top floor. And so it overlooked the Trevi Fountain, which was beautiful. And then I did some sightseeing. I went to see um, the, I think it was the Coliseum. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, I, you know, I walked around Italy, you know, the span, uh, the the steps. I forgot what it's called. The I've never Spanish been, so steps. I'm not all that familiar. I'm saying Spanish steps. I don't know if that's true. But there, it's just, there were so many beautiful places to go in Italy. The I remember once I went to a, ho- um, a restaurant in Italy, and I will say this, which was really cool, that nuns ran. Nuns ran this restaurant. And you go in there, and it was sort of looking like a, it was like a cave or something. And you go in there, and you eat, and then they sing Ave Maria at midnight. That was very amazing. And then cool. the other, it was really cool. It was like so many wonderful things. This was the 80s, guys, so I don't know if that's still happening. Um, and then there was also a, a fashion show, a huge, huge outdoor fashion show that I remember when I was there occurred. So it was an amazing experience. Um, I also was lucky enough to bring my husband at the time. Um, actually, he wasn't my husband at the time. He was my boyfriend. boyfriend. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm a pretty good girlfriend, guys. <laughs> I bring my my spouse, my beloved with me. But honestly, my favorite thing is working. I love it. I just love traveling and working. And then um, I know when I did Bill and Ted's, I traveled with Keanu and Alex and uh, Kimberly, and we went to different places um, and, and looked around. So great question. Thank yes. you for asking. Thank you, Jay. It brought back some memories for me. Excellent. Um, a handful of years prior to TerraVision, you were involved in the Amityville franchise, for the first time with Amityville 2, The Possession. What was that experience like, having some sort of weird ancestral stuff going on and uh, shooting that whole movie? Well, first of all, I want to say, I don't know if anybody knows this, but I wrote a book uh, called Diane Franklin. If Just look up Diane Franklin on the internet, because it's too long. It's Diane Franklin, The Excellent <laughs> Adventures of the Last American French Exchange Babe of the 80s, whatever. Yes. Okay. So, but in that book, I have a chapter, a whole chapter on Amityville, and it can get more into detail. But basically, um, when I did that film, I was 20. And I, if you see the film, I look probably 15, 15, 16 or so, maybe 14, I don't know. Um, and when I got the script, I was... I, I wasn't sure. First of all, I mean, I had gotten a lot of scripts during that time, but I knew two things. One is I always wanted to do a horror film, and two because I really feel it's like actor's rite of passage. You can't, you have to do a horror film if you. It's like you have to go through that. Was that uh, your first one? Uh, yes, that was, and uh, I was excited. I wanted to do that. And the second thing was I wanted to work with people who were established, and I knew that Burt Young and Ritanya Alda and uh, James Olsen were in the film, um, and Andrew Prine, and I knew that they were established actors. And when I did Last American Virgin, which was the film I had done before that, uh, we were all newbies, basically. We were like, we had not had that, you know, big experience. Um, so I really wanted to work with veteran actors. Um, when So when I got the script, 
Uh, then I find out, oh, there's nudity and there's incest. And honestly, I didn't, um, the incest didn't really bother me because I don't have a brother. So if I did, perhaps that would have made, been more uh, uncomfortable for me. But that wasn't the problem. The problem was I thought, oh, like if there's nudity, I had done nudity in Last American Virgin and I really didn't want to be just known to do nudity because once you do it, you know, you get, keep, people keep asking you and I knew that there was more to me than that. So I was hesitant, but when I, so I auditioned, but I really had, didn't think oh, I'm going to get this. I just went, okay, I'll audition. So then I got a call back. And then I got, then they asked me for a screen test. And it was shocking because it was again between Elizabeth Barrage and I. So the same girl who I auditioned with at, for, Amity, um, for Amadeus. So we, our paths kept crossing. Um, I even did a soap opera with her. If you go to my website, I, I try to, you know, help. Um, I try to do like things that are nostalgic and I'll, I'll post pictures and videos. And so I, I posted the video of her and I working when we were like 17 together. Um, so when we did, so with Amityville, it was between her and I. And then when they offered it to me, I was in shock because I really didn't think from the beginning. Sometimes you go for a role and you think, I really want this. And, and you're just crossing your fingers. And sometimes you go for something and you go, well, okay, I'll just let the chips fall where they will. And so when I was offered it, um, it, it was a hard decision to make originally just because I, I was asking my parents, like, what do you think? Is that okay with you? And it, the, again, the issue, the incest wasn't really the issue, but it was definitely, uh, should I do this nudity again? So then what I wound up doing was I decided to do the film and it was an amazing experience. And it was, well, okay, as an actress, it was so much fun. It was um to my, for me, I tried to make it as real as possible. I'm from Long Island, so I really wanted to... It was sort of like a nod to the people that I grew up with. I know what those people are like. I grew up around them, and so I really felt, you know, that I wanted to do a great job. Um, but the other part of it was, it was a... And if you're an actor, you probably understand this. It's like a generic horror film, meaning I couldn't talk like, you know, from Long Island, you know, New York accent... Because it would re at the time it would have regionalized the film, so a lot of times when you do a, a horror film, it needs to be that sort of generic. Any it could be anywhere USA. It has to have that feeling of anybody could be scared at any time. So uh, that was part of it as well. And people have asked me if I've gone to the house. I've never gone to the house, but I would love to. So hopefully someone will at some point take me there. Zach Bagan, please go <laughs> take me back with Ghost Adventures. Um, but I would love to go back there. Um, but in the other respect, I did this film. And then I don't know if the audience knows this, but I also just came out with a film. It's just out now. And that's Amityville Murders. That was going to be my next question. Oh, my gosh. So if you asked me when I was 20 years old, if I ever thought I'd do another Amityville movie, I would say... I, no, absolutely not. Like, first of all, who would remember it? It's a part two. <laughs> so who does part twos? I'm talking as if I'm in the 80s right now. Uh, nobody does part twos. And in fact, if there is a part two, no one will watch it. They'll go to watch part one. Of course, that's the 80s me speaking. Now here we are, 2019, and there are so many sequels, you can't even count them. You're asking somebody, what sequel did you watch? Um, I think there may have been 20 other sequels to there's Amityville. A, there's a lot. Right? There's a lot of uh, of them. I had no idea. And then somebody who who loved, uh, you know, a fan, loved Amityville 2, saw it when he was a child, became a writer, director, and this is Daniel Ferens, and comes to me at a screening at uh, Quentin Tarantino's theater, uh, The New Beverly, and approaches me and says, I, you know, I loved you in that film and, and came with the idea of creating it and eventually asked me to do the film and I play the mother. That's so, awesome. Uh, this is something, I mean, right now, maybe people aren't making a big deal about it, but I'm going to tell you, I am the only actress that's ever played the daughter and the mother in the same story. Oh, that's cool. Right? And died twice. Okay, so <laughs> so this is a, it's kind of an unbelievable experience. And having the perspective, 
to come from the daughter's perspective, innocent and, um, you know, um, you know, oh my gosh, I'm part of the, I'm experiencing incest with the brother and it's like horrifying and, uh, and yet I want to have closest with my brother and I'm scared. And, and then now the mother playing a character that is watching her children and trying to take care of her children. It just, what a great, I'm, I can't wait. I'm looking for somebody who's going to split that together. Yeah. <laughs> so, Someday someone's going to do it, I can tell. Put so the films together. So that new one uh, is called The Amityville Murders. Yes. And it just came out last year, correct? Yes. Actually, it came out, um, it came out this, no, this year, 2019. What happened was it screened um, at the Scream Fest last year. Okay. Uh, last November, but then it actually came out in theaters um, in March, I think, March or February, and then it just came out on Blu-ray in April. Cool. So it just came out. So if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. And I got to say, I think it's the best performance I've done in my life. Wow. In my life, yeah. So, and people have seen it and they go, yeah, I, you know, they really are excited about it. So um, I think it's, I would have always thought that I would have really been remembered for Better Off Dead, but now I'm thinking, I wonder if people remember me from Amityville. You never know, right? Well, I'm definitely going to have to check out uh, the new one then. If, oh. uh, if you think so highly of your performance in it, that's awesome. Oh, yeah, it's worth it. I have to say, if you see my performance, and then those of you who have seen the first one also will see the girl who plays my daughter um, and uh, Chelsea Ricketts, and there's shots that are similar. And I, I just think you're going to love it. I mean, the new one, again, this one is about the real story, what really happened. And there wasn't one of the reasons I really love it is because we never, we basically stay in the house the whole time. Whereas Amityville, the possession, half of that, if it takes place in the house and half of it takes place outside the house. So yeah. um, please see it and then let me know what you think. Come and find me on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. And I'd really love to know your thoughts because it's a very special experience to be able to see both films. And certainly if you're on the B-Movie Mania website, We'll have links to all of Diane's stuff uh, just underneath the interview if you want to check that out. Let's um, take a question from another one of my co-hosts. This one is from Mike. Hey, Diane. Jason Hulls again. Better Off Dead was a movie I watched over and over again as a kid. I'd love to hear any fun stories about the production, like maybe something you haven't gotten to talk about in other interviews before. Hmm. Okay, I'm not sure where Mike's question. I want went. my two dollars. <laughs> <laughs> that was obviously from Jay again. I'm not sure where the Mike question went to, but that's a great question. I will talk like this for this answer. I'm Monique. If you have not seen this film, I talk with a French accent in the film, yes. and I am say uh, I am uh, Jean Cusack uh, who plays Lynn. I am Monique Genot, his girlfriend, uh, who eventually winds up with him. Um, so, gosh, better off dead. First of all, I have to say, hands down, my favorite film ever to do. I, I wow, what a gift! What a great gift! The uh, my character was an amazing role model for kids. So, under eighteen, I highly recommend seeing this film. You got to see it. Uh, great character. I think the film, it's a comedy, but it also is a love story. Kind of amazing. People watch it on. Um, Valentine's Day, too. They watch a lot of Christmas and Valentine's Day uh, because it is a love story, but it's also it's sort of quirky. Uh, the filming of it was hilarious. Uh, I, I have a chapter in my first book. Um, I actually, in I love this film so much. I'm actually doing a third book um, where... I'm paying homage to all the characters. I'm going to have a chapter uh, like on each person who's in it. Um, Lane and Mrs. Meyer and Ricky's mother, Rick, Ricky. And um, just, I just love the film. So, um, and also, by the way, if you go to conventions that I'm in, I will, I bring the Better Off Dead coat, the film I actually wore in the film. So if you wear it and I take a picture with you wearing it, or we take a picture together with it, uh, you can send it to me and I will put it in my next book, which won't be out till like late 2020. So you've got some time. I've got some conventions this year I'm going to. You can catch up and wear it. But it's a special film for me. Um... The things that went on behind the scene. All right. So first of all, John Cusack. Okay. I'm just going to tell you when we shot it, he was the sweetest, nicest guy. And I'm not saying that he isn't now, but if you've heard anything where he's not sort of a focusing on Better Off Dead, he, he doesn't have anything against the film. I think he just likes other films that he did perhaps better. But my take on it is 
that film, he comes off so endearing and he really is sort of the every man or every teen guy. People can identify with him. And I really believe that audiences fell in love with him from that film. And with my film, I think people forgave me from Last American Virgin. (laughs) And then they saw Monique and they fell in love with Monique, which I love. And that's Yeah, I mean, how can you not? Right? Come on. Um, I can throw a a baseball. I can fix a car. And I can ski really well. (laughs) Um, So, um, and I can be feminine and have, like, to eat TV dinners and I'm happy. Uh, (laughs) So, um, okay, so when we did the film, John and I... Uh, we had just a lovely relationship and we were joking around and we had a lot of fun. And it was, I have to say, the reason I think it was such a, a memorable film and a great film is because we all got along as a cast. Every single person who was in that film wanted to be in it and then people who who weren't necessarily would be in it, like they read the script and fell in love with it. Like um, the actor who played the teacher, Mike, uh, I think it was Schiavelli. I think it was, I forgot his first name, but uh, he was in Cuckoo's Nest. And, you know, here's a major actor who's in major, major films. And he loved the script so much, he wanted to do that film. And that's saying something. David Ogden Steyer, who's in MASH. I mean, you know, established actor, loved the character. So you have to say that, you know, for people to come out and say they want to do this film really said something about the script. What I knew and what I noticed about it was that that script was so outstanding for its time because there was nothing gratuitous. There was no gratuitous language, you know, bad language um, or nudity or violence or uh, any, uh, you know, anything vulgar about it. And so it stood out. And I think the filmmakers at the time were like, how are we going to get people to come out of their homes and watch this in the theater? But for some reason, you know, it, it, somebody took a leap of faith. And I know Savage Steve Holland, who also was a writer-director, this was his baby, again, uh, he was able to convince CBS to uh, films to make this happen. And I am so grateful he did. And I, again, I, I, when I went to do the audition, they were seeing me, I think, for Beth, um, and I was like, no, you must have me as Monique. And they started to talk like this in the interview. And they said, no, I must play Monique. You have no idea how important it is for me to play this because I understand her and I, ca- I am her, this character. And so they were kind of blown away. Uh, and, you know, sometimes you just get lucky in casting. You never know the, the director's vision. Well, I, re- I think I read somewhere that you were pretty well versed already with a French accent. Is that why you were kind of pulling for that character? Oh, okay. So before I did the film, I did a film called Second Time Lucky. And this was an obscure, very boutique kind of thing. You you probably would never hear about this film ever. Uh, but I shot it in New Zealand and it was the story of Adam and Eve. And I played Eve, but through different time periods. So uh, it was t- originally it took place in um, it was Eve. But then suddenly I was in uh time of Caesar and Cleopatra I was in that during that time period and then I was in the time period of um I think the Roaring Twenties and I was in the World War One and that's where I played a French nurse and then I played a punk rocker and so forth, all these different characters. But when I did the character where I played the French Uh, nurse, that was the first time I got to use my French accent. And I felt very confident and I worked very hard on my my dialects. Um, The the thing about it is that it still has to be understood. So a lot of times when you do a dialect, you have to pull back what is you know, for instance, if I told like this, if I was really talking with a French accent, perhaps it would be very difficult to understand. So you have to Hollywoodize it a little bit. I mean, you, you have to pull back to make it easy for the audience to understand. So my feeling is that when you, the most important thing as an actress is to become the character and to embody it so that you are completely 100% in that world and that it is believable. So I think that when you're watching actors, at least during my time, we had the time to develop characters, to work on them. Today, it's hard. You know, you don't have a lot of time. Uh, As an actor, you better do a lot of research because once you start going on auditions and once you start kicking in to working a lot, you don't have a lot of time to prep. So um, that but that gave me a little time to prep, get my confidence up and uh, 
Uh, and then also, you know, follow my passion of dialects. I just, I love it, all the different dialects, even the German, that's very good too. So it's very fun. <laughs> that's great. Fantastic. Better Off Dad, one of the all-time 80s great comedy movies, without question. Um, speaking of um, social media and stuff like that, I wanted to mention your daughter, Olivia. Aww. <laughs> who is also an actor and has been working on a few uh, exciting things with you. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about some of that. This is great you asked this because this is really where we brings it to some contemporary information. All right. So... My daughter is a filmmaker. She writes, directs, acts, and edits. Okay. And my son is a musician. All right. And his name is... Uh, so my daughter's Olivia De Laurentiis and my son is Nick De Laurentiis. So he is, if you look on Spotify, he has music on there. He's also in a band called um, Swatches. Um, but he is also a classical music player, a uh, musician. He plays the double bass. So what's happening right now in my life is I'm going for auditions and I'm acting and both my... Children are in the entertainment field. And if you had told me that when I was doing Better Off Dead, when I was a kid, I would have thought that is, that, that, that's a miracle. Like, how is that even possible that two children could be in the entertainment business? And I just have to say, I think it's uh, partly because I think I've just always said to my kids, go after your dreams, you know, and there's no reason why you shouldn't go after them. But it does mean you have to work hard because... For every person who says they want to do it, you know, somebody else wants to do it too. So what makes you stand out is the, or make it happen is the hard work you put in. And that hard work comes from learning a lot about the entertainment business and the world and what your specialty is, and then also doing. You have to do. So both my kids have experimented a lot. And that I think is really important. Um, I always tell kids, if you want to be in your career, start as a teen, because that's your learning time. It's before you, once you graduate and you go to after college, it's like, you're going to be working, you're going to fall in love, you know, all these things take a lot of time. So start, it's not to say that you can't start your career later on. It just means that you're going to have to put in time. And unless you're willing to do that as an adult, uh, you know, you know, a lot of things can consume you. Right. Right. You have to like, let's say you have a job you go to all day long, you come home. Well, instead of like just watching TV, you're going to have to compose or you're going to have to research or you're going to have to practice dialects or whatever it is. Right. So, OK, in terms of my daughter now, Olivia has been making films since she was literally well, five, but like, say, 12, she won her first film award. And then she's also been at the L.A. Film Festival, uh, which is no longer, I hear it's gone now, oh. which is so sad. Mm. I'm, I just heard about this. is It's no longer happening. Um, but she was at the Soho Film Festival. She got the Mike Wallace Award. She's been writing, directing, acting, and making films. She's also, um, but her major thing is comedy. So what's happened is she has now... There's a couple of things. She's been uh, acting. She's done an episode of Cool Kids. She's got a show, a, a prank show coming out in the fall that she was part of uh, doing, which was going to probably be kind of big. You can hear about her. Um, she has been doing sketches with her comedy partner, Sydney Heller, under the name Barely Legal Comedy. So if you go online, uh, you go to YouTube, put Barely Legal Comedy, you'll find all their sketches. But the most exciting part now is she just got her first show with her comedy partner. And this is just between you and me. So <laughs> and you and all Do these. Do I have to cut this part out? Right. Okay. I don't think so, but I'm just, it's like, you're the first people to know. Uh, she just got a, a Snapchat series and Snap, Snapchat's doing these series. And so it's going to be huge. You know, she just did, the episodes are hilarious. So these are, uh, you thinking Snapchat, how is that a show? They're actually going to come out with some shows. So keep your eye on Snapchat. I think it'll might be out this summer where I don't, I'm outside the, the realm of that, what's going on. And are, are you in one of those episodes somewhere? Uh, no, the Snapchat one I'm not in, although I was in an episode of a series, and you can go online to check this out, called Sugar Babies. And I'm right. in episode three of that, which is, again, hilarious. And you get to see Sydney and Olivia work together. Um, I, it's, I feel like, you know, their career is building, 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 because people are starting to get an understanding of their comedy. Um and that was the other thing, too. She's coming with an, a new kind of comedy that has not been done before. And I said to her, you know, the audience has to like it's like um, when Tina Fey and um, Amy Poehler came out, nobody 
understood the comedy until they did it for a while and then people caught on and they went, oh, okay, that's what's funny. Like, I get that. So at the beginning, when you do comedy, people might not get it right away, but that, un- and it's strangely, that's what makes you famous because it's different. And if you do something everybody else does, well, then why is it, why right. should people watch it? Right. So my daughter and her comedy partner, Sydney Heller, Heller um, really are bringing something new to the table. And it's all I could say, brilliant. That's the word for it. It is shockingly brilliant. Her comedy. I mean, you can watch it over and over again because you miss and you go, oh, I got to watch it again to see what they, that was hilarious. Oh, did I miss that last time? Which actually is in, in a way reminds me of Better Off Dead because Better Off Dead's really funny, but there's always something you miss when you watch it. Like you go, oh, look at Danny. He's jumping after the balloon. Like you see little things that are funny um, in the background, maybe that are happening that you didn't see the first time. She's smarter than all of my all of me put together. Right? <laughs> my husband and I look at each other like, "What is happening?" So, um, That's great. yeah, she's amazing, and uh, I'm so I'm sorry I'm momming out with you guys. <laughs> um, uh, and then my son is coming out with his own music, and again, his music is totally unique. It's something that people might go, "Well, what's going on with that?" And later on, going, "Oh my gosh, like this is quite amazing." So, to me, that's like. You know, you're live, take advantage of it, you know, create, create, just keep doing it, keep creating um, and don't look for the payback. The payback will come if you're doing it. You're a proud mom, clearly. Yep. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's seriously like you just (laughs) push that button and bam, it all came out. It's good. It's good. Let's uh, okay. let's get to the final question from my co-host here. This should be from Chris. Let's see what we got. Hi, Diane. Jason again. One more thing. My three-year-old son, Logan, loves pickles. Just curious, do you like pickles? Thanks. Good question. Uh, Do I love pickles? I only love the fresh, the new pickles, the crunchy, classic, not, not the old pickles, but they call them new pickles. Those are the ones I love. They're like cucumber pickles. Do not like pickles other than those pickles. I will go to a restaurant and order those kind of pickles. That's just how I roll with you my like, pickles. You like pickles that are just barely pickles. Yep. They're like half cucumber, half pickle. Yeah. Got it. That's, that's my preference. So, you know, now you guys know the kind of pickle yeah. girl I am. <laughs> Jay, thanks for the question. Mike, Chris, not sure what happened there, but uh, good questions from Jay. Thank you, Jay. Jay <laughs> saved the day. Jay. Yes. <laughs> Um, my final question for you, as a child who grew up in the 80s, obviously we got to talk about Bill and Ted a little bit. Bill and Ted's excellent in- adventure in which you played uh, Princess Joanna, um, one of my all-time favorite 80s movies. So it's, it's, it's amazing for me to be sitting here talking to you right now solely for that reason. Well, thank you very much. Um, so Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures, I played English Princess, if you don't know the film. and uh, But so, soon maybe we will because they're doing a Bill and Ted's 3. Yes. Um, so Bill and Ted's have a funny story. I was originally playing princess elizabeth or at least that was my character's name when i got the script it said princess elizabeth so we did the film and i don't think they ever say princess elizabeth in the film they just say princesses or babes right so come the film the film comes out and what happens my name is in the credits as princess joanna Uh so for years i have been signing things saying you know princess joanna you know some autographs right and I got in contact with um, the writer from Bill and Ted's, uh, Ed Solomon. And I said, so, you know, what if I did come back or to the film, what would my name be? And he said, well, it's obviously Elizabeth. He goes, what are you talking about? I said, well, in the credits in Bill and Ted 1, I was Joanna. He said, I had no idea. No, you're <laughs> Elizabeth goes with Bill. That's just <laughs> with, with Ted. That's just the way it goes. So um, I thought that was a cr- kind of a cool tidbit to tell you guys um, that Princess uh I, I, I don't even know who I am now, right? So, um, but Joanna. for now, I'm Princess Joanna, and uh, <laughs> um, they're doing Bill and Ted's Three, which I think is so exciting. Um, I want to tell people I wouldn't get my hopes up for me being the princess, um, but I would say that I think it just has to do with the princesses were the babes. We were. It's about Bill and Ted, you know. It's really about their friendship, and I think that's the focus of where the filmmakers want to take it. So. Um, you know, I'm just glad I was one of the princesses and that I can uh, perhaps be the one of the original princesses. And 
Uh, I'm grateful that I'm in the film. And I think that what I love about the film as well is that the, this is a film and talk about like showing to everybody. It's general. You can show it. Uh, I've had people show it in schools. Um, you can show it to your kids. You can pass it on. And I think it has a great message, you know, be excellent to each other, which is totally excellent. Um, I think we can use that today. Please be excellent to each other. Oh, we need it today we need it more so than ever. Bad. More than ever, more than ever. Um, and I think that they, those guys, those characters are unbelievably endearing. They're so hilarious. I think the new script is so funny. So I hope people will go see it. And uh, maybe one day we'll have a big Bill and Ted festival where yes. we'll all show up and we'll be totally excellent to each other and to our fans. Awesome. Um is there anything that you would like to discuss with any sort of, um, you know, upcoming projects, things that you have coming out soon, anything like that? Yes. All right. So end of October, I think, is a New Jersey Horror Con. Um, so and I'm going to be there with the other princess from Bill and Ted's, which cool. will be great. And Amanda Wiss. So it's a total better off dead Bill and Ted's uh, party. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so don't forget to mark that on your calendar. And then I'm also going to be going to 80s in the Sand. Um, I, this might be my last one I'm going to, uh, but it's an incredible experience. It's called 80s in the Sand. If you love the 80s, check it out. Um, it's musicians and uh, bands are coming to play and 80s actors will be there and it's a week-long 80s blast it's you, like a beach party it's or? a beach it's basically a you go to a hotel for one week and it's like a beach experience you go there and the like for instance berlin was there uh, they have like i don't know maybe five to ten bands there and every night there's different bands playing and there's signings and then you can you know enjoy the beach and the water you don't have to worry about anything you pay ahead of time and I loved it so much. This is my third time. So just letting you know, I wouldn't be going there if it wasn't yeah. amazing. Sounds awesome. Yeah, it's incredible. Um, and then I might be going to England this year also. Uh, so there's some awesomeness there to add. That, that's going to be probably so focusing on Amityville, my old Amityville and the new one. So we'll be showing probably both films, which will be exciting. Um, and... Also, I have some film roles. I did a film this year called um, High Holiday, and that will be out before the end of the year. And I have a cameo, sort of cameo part, a small part in that. Keep your fingers crossed for other film roles, but I am out there and we'll see. Um, but definitely follow me on social media because I post things that have to do with me, but I also do with my daughter and my son. And so it's totally excellent. When yeah. things come up, I also post like, you know, things from Last American Virgin. I know... There, oh, there might be another sequel perhaps going in the works with Virgin, and there may be another thing having to do with Better Off Dead coming up too. So wow. everybody stay connected. There's there's so much going on I don't even remember. <laughs> cool. And can you just, uh, for anyone who's listening on uh, you know a podcast device, can you just go over your social media and your website real quick if they want to check that out? Absolutely. And I, I apologize for also speaking so quickly. I, I have so much to say that I I tend to rush it. But when I'm at a convention, I slow down, right? <laughs> <laughs> or when I'm acting. Um, so if you want to stay in touch with me, go to, on Twitter, go to Diane Franklin 8080. Uh, if you want to go on Instagram, it's actress Diane Franklin. And if you want to go on Facebook, Go to Diane Franklin fans because my Diane Fra uh, Franklin, my general, uh, my regular account is full. Um, so everybody has to go to, uh, if you go to Diane Franklin fans under a group section, you will see me there. And that's like, I run it. So I just want to let you know, you'll see me. So look for Diane Franklin fans. And I'm... I'm really active on social media, um, and it's just fun. I, my my sites are very upbeat, and I just try to bring people back to the 80s and also bring fun times today. So that's basically where I'm coming from. That's great. Fantastic. Well, Diane, thank you so much. This has been an absolute pleasure for me. Thank and you. I'm I so excited. I also want to say thank you for catching the bird earlier today. The bird. Yeah. I caught the bird. We I, had a bird fly in here completely randomly. And I'm like, oh, no, what are we going to do? It's going to take us three hours to get this bird out of here. And I just went and said, I'm catching the bird. And I did. <laughs> so it just I'm sort of like the Snow White. I come in and I go, oh, I'm going to get this bird. And I took the bird out and let it fly free. So Amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. <laughs> Thank you. Au revoir.
Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydie? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out, touch them. They are touching themselves, and they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B Movie Mania. Woohoo!